Hi, welcome back to RetroAxis. On this episode, I've built a brand new Nintendo Entertainment System. Let's take a look. So when I said Nintendo Entertainment System, I was actually talking about a brand new LEGO that came out not too long ago. So several months back, uh, we purchased this through the LEGO VIP program, and I just finally got around to assembling it. And what I can say is that this thing is far more intricate and, and really cooler than I actually expected it to be. So let's take a quick look at the assembly, uh, some of the more intricate parts, and I'll show you actually what, it, what the final product looks like. So Legos are something that's been around since my early childhood, and it's something I've, I've spent a tremendous amount of time playing over the years. Even into my teen years, I'd still break out my Legos and put them together. And uh, of course, as an adult, uh, I continue to enjoy Legos a lot. Uh, a couple of years ago, we put this one together, and this is a, um, a replica of the of the space shuttle, and it's a really neat replica. It's got the booster rockets. It's got even the bay doors open up. And there's a uh, you know the arm uh, the Canada arm <laughs> replica is in here. There's a, a satellite that you you can launch. Um, really lots of detail and really amazing stuff. Um, in fact, here's the crawler that brings it to the launch pad. And, and overall, it's just a really cool uh, Lego. Uh, and so of course, when when the Nintendo Lego uh, came out, it was also something that I was extremely interested in. And uh, you know, getting the Lego, of course, uh, I, I didn't realize how complex and how amazing this thing really was going to be. You know, it has two full uh, manuals, uh, one for the actual console itself and one for uh, the television. And I'll take a quick look at some of the more difficult uh, and really interesting uh, parts of this build. Uh, and, and hopefully you'll come to appreciate this as I have. So let's take a look. So as you can see, the first book itself is where you assemble the console, the controller, and the game cartridge. And as you open it up, it tells you a really great story, it gives you a little history on the, um, you know, how the, how the Nintendo Entertainment System came to America. Because of course in Japan it was known as the Famicom or the Family Computer. And it even goes into details on the folks from LEGO who actually took the time to figure out how to put this thing together. Uh, and so, you know, as you start diving in, it shows you, of course, what the final product is going to be. And starting off on page one, you start building the, the bottom part of the, of the console. Uh, now, this is a 210-page book, so it goes all the way 210 pages, and there's quite a lot of steps involved. And I think some of the areas where I was most impressed is as I started digging in more and realizing, um, at first I thought I was building a circuit board and then as, and as I got further down I realized um, I was actually building the inner workings of the Nintendo and so you can see here you're building uh, the cartridge slot so where you actually load the cartridges in and it actually has a spring-loaded mechanism and you can see here in this diagram where you actually have a spring-loaded assembly uh, and you go through and you build all this stuff and I think um, the detail especially is the part where as you, the further you go along, the more you realize that they really did think of every single thing. Uh, you know, as I'm further here now, I'm on page 115, you can start to see uh, in this diagram, you can see where the controller slots are. You have your, uh, your, your audio and video jacks. And of course, uh, the more you go, you can see the buttons here and a little uh, LED light. So really quite amazing and quite detailed. So here's the actual final assembly of that Nintendo Entertainment console. So that first book, after you get through 210 pages, essentially this is what you get. So of course, you know, here's a replica of the controller, all the way down, down to the fine details of the A and B buttons, the Nintendo logos here, your select and your start buttons, and of course your D-pad. And then the cable itself that connects it to, and you can actually see how it can connect in and out. You can disconnect it and reconnect it. You can move it to slot two if you, if you like. Uh, really, really neat. But I think the things that are most interesting to me are even the things like the ventilation slots. You can look on the side here. They even have the little, uh, you know, part that was, uh, you, had, you had that channel that went underneath. And of course, on both sides, they've done that channel. And here you can see, again, the AV slots. You can see the detail. They've even put the stickers for audio and video. And that was actually built onto the piece. I actually didn't even have to put that sticker on. 
Um, so really, really amazing. Here's again the front. You can see the, uh, the LED indicator light, the power button, the reset button. Now these don't actually press, they're just fixed in place, but, uh, but really neat. Now I think the most amazing part to me was when you open the flap, you can see we've got a cartridge in there. Um, I think the part that really blew my mind more than anything was I could actually press this down and pull the cartridge out. And here's my, here's my actual cartridge, Mario Brothers. It's uh, you know, certainly um, Super Mario Brothers uh, uh, cartridge. Certainly scaled as well. It's not, you know, it's not full scale, but it is scaled down. But the fact that I can actually slide the cartridge in just like I did on the original NES, press down and it's spring loaded and, and stays in place. I mean, that is an absolute replica of the way that the NES system worked. And, and to me, that's just the, the level of detail and attention to every little aspect of the NES is, is truly impressive. So now let's take a quick look at the television because they provided a second uh, booklet. So we'll take a quick look at that. So after completing the actual console, you move on to building an actual television. And this is a, a, one of the more interesting pieces. Now this is a 247 page booklet. And what I like about this particular book is they continue by um, showing you more about some of the games that were the more popular around the time of, of launch. So for example, uh, Donkey Kong, you had uh, Legend of Zelda, Excite Bike, and of course one of my all time favorites, Metroid. Uh, and it tells a bit more of a story and gives you an idea of what you're about to build. And so as you start diving into the television, um, you know, there's some uh, obvious things where you say, wow, this thing really looks like an old CRT television from back in the, you know, 70s and 1980s for sure. Um, you know, it has switches and knobs. But you start to realize very early on as you're building this thing that you're building something mechanical. You can see lots of gears. You can see an actual crank arm over here on the right. Um, and then of course the, the, the same detail and effort that they put into the console they've carried through here. You can see you've got a, a, a coaxial, out, actually this is the coaxial outlet here and the barrel connector. This is a power cord. Um, you know, and the further you go you can see the detail. But notice throughout this build you're continuing to see more and more gears and, and, and pieces and parts. And um, I'll dive into that a little bit more. This was again one of the more uh, fun parts of this build because you're, you're building this uh, really neat assembly and I'm going to show you that here in just a second. But certainly you can appreciate the level of detail and effort that went into this build. So here's the completed television and what you can see here, it did actually come with a stand that is actually separate so you can actually take it off the stand if you, if you wish. Uh, but what's really interesting, you can actually see the lines, how they actually built the old CRT uh, where you know this is where the the electronics were uh, for the cathode ray tube but uh, what's interesting again you know you've got the detail here of your your two connectors your audio and your video connector here's your coaxial barrel connector this I assume would be just other uh, you know plugs they didn't actually put a plug on this one but uh, you actually have an antenna for your uh, UHF VHF here's the crank which we'll look at here in just a second but the level of deep detail just on the rear is really neat um, and each piece actually was serialized. So actually, uh, I didn't actually show you this before, but actually, they actually have a serial number here, and actually I think somewhere on the unit, uh, they had a serial number also that was, that was unique to this particular kit. So every one of these has its own unique serial number. Um, but taking a look again, um, let's look at the front of this, uh, the TV, and you can see the detail work here as well. Um, so taking a look at the television, you can see they've got the speaker, which is integrated into the TV. They've got a nice frame that frames the picture. Here's your knob, and the knob actually actually clicks and, and, and works. Uh, these are fit, just fixed buttons, but you got your on-off button, your VHF, UHF button. Um, so just really, really well done. Um, but let's dive into the really the coolest part yet, is um, taking a look here at what this actual... Um, lever does so let's go ahead and spin that now you can see mario is actually moving around on the level and you can see the level changing uh, and this is just so cool i mean the fact that they took the time to engineer this and figure out how to make it work and of course it's in a repeating loop but um as you're building this thing and you start to realize you're just like wow i mean I, at least i was i was certainly blown away at, at how neat this was um 
Now you can't fall down the hole the way they built it. And also you can't go backwards. It is a one way scroll. So you're not allowed to go back, which actually is true to the original game as well. If you recall, the more you went forward, you were not allowed to go back. So also kind of a neat, neat thing that they did. I think what might also be interesting would be if, if, if you took this thing apart and perhaps you were to build another scene, maybe you built an excite bike or a Donkey Kong or something else. I, I bet there's probably a way you could you could rebuild this scene with the right Lego parts. But uh, anyways, just the amount of detail, just truly, truly incredible. So that's it for this episode of Retro Axis. I hope you enjoyed this, and I certainly did. It was fun to build it and also fun to demonstrate for you how really cool this Lego is. So certainly if you can locate one of these, highly suggest you pick it up and make a great collector's item for anyone who loves retro gaming as I do. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe. Give us a thumbs up. Uh, we also now have a video channel also on rumble.com. And we've also improved our website at retroaxis.tv. So be sure to log in there and take a look also. Have a great day. Thanks a lot.